toolbox of this new year. So all my best wishes to you and your families. Hopefully you have some new year resolutions which involve working hard at Kingston University and in this module, maybe even arriving on time. <laughs> Um, so today we are going to start a very important topic in computing science, which are databases. So we are going to have a, just a, a starter today when you are going to get quite a few lectures on databases during your time in, in Kingston. But I think it's good for you to, to get a first taste and to start applying those techniques on, on your website. Because as you know, you have this uh, big component of the module is this 20% or 20% of the mark is doing a website which will involve using databases. So it's good to get started early. Okay, so we have already gone through half of the lectures. So we have touched at uh, all the different themes. And, uh, and as part of web prototyping, which will lead eventually to, to that uh, big piece of coursework, we are going to look at database concepts today. And next week, we will be looking at MySQL. OK, so if we look at who how many students have passed the different activities so far? Um, so we see that we are around 120 students who seem to be working regularly um, out of 180, so that's not that good. But also the trend has a tendency to go down, which, which is not good because at the end of the year, it feels that nobody will be doing the, the activities anymore. Um, still, there are 39 students who have passed all the activities so far. So they have already 36%. Uh, activity 10 was due last, nine was due last night. So possibly this afternoon when I will be marking, some of you will have already passed the module. You will have had the 40% points. Which doesn't mean that you need to stop. It means that you can congratulate yourself because it's a good start. You know. Now you don't have to stress anymore about that module. But as you have seen, what we are doing in the model, the modules are very important concepts that you will go through through your three years at Kingston. And it's important to nail them down during the first year because things are always getting faster and faster. So if you get your 40%, congratulations, but then you have to aim for the 80%. Yeah. And then 20% for the final piece of coursework. So well done to these uh, 36, but there are 150 who are not in that category. So those people should, uh, work maybe a bit harder. Okay, so today we are going to, to, have to look at some concepts of um, databases and more importantly, during this activity, the activity uh, related to that uh, lecture, you are going to apply them. Okay. If I remember well, you have all already built a blog using uh, WordPress. Quite possible that there is a database behind that blog. Okay. So part of the activity will be to investigate that database because creating the blog has been quite easy. You get a new, a nice interface. You just click at the right place, choose things in the menus. But there were a lot of work going on in the background, and you will see that there is a whole structure of a database which was created. Okay. And uh, what we are going to see today will allow you, for example, to investigate that structure. Okay, so now you are going to become 
not anymore just a user of a nice package like WordPress, but you will have some understanding about what data and how the data are organized in, a, in that database. And you will be able to change them if you need to. Okay, okay. so as uh, we are going to speak about database, there's a very important word that we need to define is the word data. Okay. So I've written four possible definitions and I would like you to, to pick the correct one. So if I remember well, the channel is number three in this room. There will be a few other clicker questions in this lecture. Can we go up to 25 or shall we be content? Oh, we have 25 now. So I guess every 26. Let's assume that everybody who wanted to vote has voted. of the crowd uh, has spoken and indeed the correct answer is uh, C. There's a bit of confusion I can still see with D okay. and we will see that there's a whole, there's a pyramid in the way that data and information is structured. So data is at the bottom of the pyramid and the second layer, which is called information, is the definition is D. So people who got D, they were not correct, but they were not too far off. So that's not too bad. Um, so, but well done for people who chose C. Okay, so it's very important. Uh, we have seen there was a bit of confusion for 20% of you to make the difference between data and information. So that's data. Okay. So plenty of numbers, words, but under that form is pretty much useless. Do we agree? Yeah. I mean, there are a few lecturers in the university who would obviously look a bit like that. <coughs> And for th they must have some superhuman power, you know, to find some information in their organization system. But for normal human being, you know, that's rubbish. You know. There's not much we can do out of that. So information is data which have been organized. Okay, they have been organized in a coherent and meaningful manner which means that using that data, we can eventually communicate some information. And uh, what, guys, and what a database management system is trying to do is to transform your data into eventually an action, okay? And that goes through a set of steps so initially you have those data, so all those numbers, all those words, and they need to be organized in a, in a, in a way, and that provides you with information. Eventually when you exploit that information, you get knowledge. 
and knowledge is what will allow you to take some kind of action or to make a decision. Okay. So data is really at the bottom of the pile. And if you don't treat your data right, you will take eventually the wrong decision. You will not be informed by your evidence. So there is this uh, pyramid called the Data Information <coughs> Knowledge Wisdom Pyramid. So that's the same uh, idea. And here I'm going to give you some example. Data are, as we said, numbers or values which are collected. So we are collecting a color. We are collecting a GPS uh, position and V2.0, we don't really know, understand what it means. So that's your data, and as you can see, it doesn't bring you much. However, with, when you go to the next level of information, you understand that this data is a way of describing uh, a traffic light. You get its position, and you know that it's red, okay? So that's information, that's very useful. You know that in that place, there's a traffic light which is red. Knowledge is, is more about context. I'm very interested, am I interested in the fact that there's a traffic light which is red in the middle of Con uh, Kingston? At this very moment, I'm not really interested in that, okay? However, if I am driving towards Kingston, that's a piece of information which is very useful, okay? So my knowledge is to bring all that information together, knowing where I am, and through that, I can take a decision. I can apply that knowledge and say, okay, I'm on that road, there is that traffic light, I need to stop, okay? So imagine all those Google cars, which are self-driven cars, they are going through a pipeline which is not, which is not dissimilar to, to this one, okay? So I think it has illustrated quite well the different levels, and also the fact that data on its own is pretty useless. Okay, so as we said, a uh, database system is trying to convert data into information, okay? And the way it does it, it's organized those data in a meaningful, consistent way, okay? So here I have uh, three sets of things, <coughs> and I would like to know which of those four is actually a database, okay? According to my definition that a database is an organized collection of data. Sorry. Well done. So, a lot of people, when they think <coughs> about database, they think about a computer system. But it doesn't need to be, and actually, most databases are not. Often they have a format of paper. Yeah, so all of those manner of organizing data are called databases. <coughs> So here I have uh, a longer list. So we have the telephone take di directory, the TV guide, airline reservation system, car re <coughs> registration records, a discussion board, papers in your filing cabinet. You know, if 
it's filed properly with sections and, and so on. Uh, the file on your computer hard drive, web indices, and so on. Okay, so we are surrounded by databases. So, and that, as we have understood now, databases have been around for a very long time. So it didn't wait for the first computer to, to be around. So here are some images of the past where you have these uh, bookshelves full of uh, little uh, piece of cardboard with names and uh, titles. You may still see that in some libraries which haven't been uh, informed. Uh, computerized yet. When I was a kid, that was uh, the norm. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so before we had uh, the proper database systems, <coughs> we had the file based systems. Okay, so in order to to you had a, bi a business which has been uh, computerized, and for each different task, you had a different piece of software. Okay. And, uh, and each software had its own uh, set of data connected to that software. So if we look at these examples, you will have a shop, and you will have a piece of software dealing with your sales, and a piece of software dealing with your stock. Okay. So obviously with each piece of software, you have an, uh, an interface which allow you to enter some data <coughs> and also to retrieve the, the content of your system in a format you are interested in. So it can be a report, so type of report could be uh, a bill, for example, could be generated for, from such a, a system. So each of those software would be able to handle, fi uh, handle files, will have possibly their own file definition, and will save their data in a given file. Okay? So you have two different systems do dealing with different parts of, the bu uh, of your business, <coughs> but you will have two sets of files. The problem is that very quickly your system becomes inconsistent. Okay? You are making a sale, which means that your stock is going down. So each time you, sales, you sell something, you have to go afterwards in the stock system and say minus one, because the two systems are not connected. Okay? So that's the, the big problem of the file-based system. So data are separated. Data are also duplicated. Okay. So the way you are going to describe different uh, products in your do two systems maybe become different. Maybe you will have updated the prices in one system and not updating the prices in the other one. So they will be inconsistent. The file formats can, can even be uh, incompatible because you are maybe uh, purchasing those systems from different companies. And security, a uh, overall security of your data is not uh, organized. So that's why we want to use what is called a database management system. So again, we are looking at those two different type uh, tasks you want to perform in your business. Again, each of those tasks have a different type of input and output, which are very specific uh, to the task. And maybe different people in the company will uh, work with sales, and another type of people will work with stock. So they don't want the same interface because they are not interested in the same things. However, now that we are using a database management systems, all these data which have been captured 
are going to the same place. So now there is a unique database dealing with the data coming from those two parts of your application. So the formal definition of a database management system, so it's a software that enables users to define, create, and maintain databases and provides you control, a uh, control access to the database. Okay. Again, if you have a large company, you want certain certain employees will have certain rights. Why would everybody have the, the right to change the prices of the products? That's concern only maybe the sales, the marketing department. People who are dealing with stock shouldn't be involved in prices. Because obviously, the more people who are allowed to touch your data, the more those risk of making mistakes. So it's very important that they control access to the uh, <coughs> database. Some people will be only able to interrogate the database, but will not have the possibility to change the data. And obviously, in such a system, you will be able to add, modify, delete data, ask questions to the system. What is my stock today? Or what was my stock yesterday? Uh, and obviously, you want to produce reports, you want to produce bills, you want to produce tax reports, and so on. So that all that is comprised in a database management system. So by using such a system, and if you use it well, because obviously you can still, even if you have a very good tool, you can still design a database which is not very good. Okay? It's not because you have a very good car that you are going to become a very good driver. Yeah? Um, so if it has been set up appropriately and you will get many classes about how to set up the databases. You will have a minimal data redundancy. Okay, so when you are speaking about a product that you have already worked with, you will not have to retype everything. Everything will be memorized and will be recognized very quickly. Data will be consistent. You will not have different values for the same uh, product in your database. Uh, data will be integrated, they will all be at the same place. So in principle, you can ask for any association of data in your system. Uh, better integrity, so you know who has been, uh, has the right to change the data. So if there is a problem, you, you know where to go to. You will have a whole security system for your database. And also it's going to follow some standards, which means that if your database system is maybe a bit becoming a bit too small for your application, you will be able to migrate to another system. And since they are following standards, there will be converters allow you to export your data from one system to another. So among the types of databases, one which is very important is the relational databases. And it was de devised by uh, a Brit, Cott, in 1970. And uh, that's the seminal paper where he presented the concept of these uh, relational dat databases. And this system has been extremely successful. It was presented more than 45 years ago, and it's still the system which is used the most in the world, by far. Okay. And uh, one of the, two of the strengths of that system is first is based on mathematics. Okay. So it has been proved that by building a database that way, you will get consistency, security, and all these things. You know, it's very clear from a theoretical point of view. 
The other thing which makes it uh, very popular, it's very easy to understand. Okay. So, a definition, if you want the, the layman definition is, it's a collection of tables where data are stored and there are some logical connections among those tables. That's all what you need. Okay. You need to define the right tables and connect those tables the right way. If you can do that, you can build a relational database. So it's very intuitive. So a table obviously has some columns and some rows. So in the columns, you have fields. Okay, so there are fields are properties. They are characteristic, they are descriptors of an object or something of interest. Okay, so if you are looking at an employee, for example, in order to describe an employee, you will get some kind of ID, maybe you will have their taxpayer ID, their surname, their name, their address, their phone number. Okay. So all those are the, the different fields which collect the data about an employee. And then you have the rows where you have individual records. So in this case, it's going to be the list of your employees. And uh, so a database is going to be constructed through a large number of tables. So if you are dealing with a company, you will have an employee table, but you will have maybe a salary table, and you will have a branch tables. You have maybe hundreds of tables. Okay. And as we said, what is very important is this relational uh, database systems is one is a table, secondly is the connection between the tables. And in order to connect the tables, you need what is called a primary key. Okay? So the primary key is a unique identifier for each record. So it's a value that, if I give you that value, you get exactly the record you are looking for. So if you look at employees, it may be tempting to use a surname. But if I use one surname, I will get potentially many employees. Okay? Because the surname is not unique. The address is not unique either. Many people live in the same place. So you need something completely unique to that employee. That's why, typically, when you uh, join an organization, you get your, uh, your ID in that organization. When you registered and enrolled uh, at Kingston, you were given uh, KUI. Okay. And that's the piece of information we use the most. When you log in, we, are, we don't ask you about your name, where you live. We are not interested in that. That's not specific. That's not unique. What we want is your primary key. Okay? So you, now you know that Kingston University has a database. And in the table, of, which is called students, their primary key is KU number. Okay? And this number is not going to change. For all your time at Kingston, you will get the, K, the same K number. And as an alumni, you will, get, you will keep the same uh, KU number. So carrying on with uh, definitions, you have the concept of query. <coughs> so it's basically a request to retrieve some information which is in your database. Okay. So that's a query allow you to get information. Data are in your database. Now you want information. So it's something uh, higher level. You would like the list of all students attending IT Toolbox. Okay. So it's very specific. 
and the database should be able to, to provide you that information. And in order to make uh, those queries, you need obviously some uh, query language in order to be able to make some uh, interesting, precise, advanced queries. So maybe you, I would like to know all the students attending IT Toolbox who have already passed the module. That could be my query. Or uh, the one which are below 20%, even if we are already at more than half of the year. Okay. So that's what the query language will allow us to do, to be very precise, to convert those, that data, all those numbers, all those values that have been entered into some kind of information which will allow us to have some knowledge and eventually take a decision. Are you going to pass the first tier or not? We are going to run a query, and the output of this query will allow us to make that decision. But obviously, that's only information. They will be needing as well uh, some contextual knowledge. Are these students at meeting eating circumstances? So they haven't passed yet, but they haven't failed either. So we, need, we, are, we are going to go through a different process. And then there is the, the report, okay? So if we think about the query as, basically it's a question, you are interrogating your database, the report is the answer. Okay. And obviously a report can be very sophisticated. It, uh, it can be uh, your mark transcript, okay? So you will get a, a very nice logo, Kingston University. For each of your modules, you will get some numbers. And maybe you will get a decision at the end of the report <coughs> telling that you have passed the year. So the report can be quite sophisticated and obviously will be related to, to your query. So going back to the connections between tables, so if we go back to our company, let's say that we have a company with different branches and obviously this company has many staff. <laughs> So we are going to have a staff table, or, and again, you're going to get your staff ID or staff numbers. You will have details about each member of staff, each instance of that table. And obviously, since it's a company with many branches, each member of staff is allocated to a branch. And if you don't design your database properly, what you are going to, so to do is, in the staff table, you are going to put all the information about the place where they work. So you are going to put the, the branch address and so on. Okay? So that's a lot of work, because each time you have an employee, you have to write everything. And then the day uh, you are moving one branch to one address to another, you have to go through the whole table and change everything by hand. Okay. In addition, each time you are going to enter the data, you are at risk of making mistakes. Okay. When you are entering the, uh, the address of your branch. Some people will write Kingston, Surrey, and some, pe some people will write Kingston, Greater London. And then when you are making a query, I would like to know all my staff which is in Greater London, you are going to miss half of the people. Okay? So it's very important to have many tables in order not to duplicate information. Each time you duplicate, you have at risk of making mistakes. And it's more work for you when you are entering the new values. Okay? So what you want to do is when you have a new staff member, you allocate a staff ID, you write their um, their details, and you allocate them to a branch. And the right way to do it is to have a menu. Are they in branch five, seven, or three? Because at the moment, that's the three branches we have. Okay. But we are not going to enter the values 
specific value about the, of the, about the branches. You will have another table, which is the branch table. So you have your list of branch ID, and for each branch, you will have the address. So if tomorrow one branch is moving from one place to another, you don't need to touch the staff table, you just update the, the, the field of your branch. Okay. Um, similarly, in your staff table here we have salary, and maybe it would be a better idea to create a salary table. Okay. Because usually companies, and large compa company in particular, they have salary for different types of positions. You know, you have sal salary grades, and everybody with a similar position will get the same salary. So instead of associating a salary to each staff, better to have a salary table and say this staff is of grade 10. And in grade 10, it's a currently such type of salary. So when the next time you are hopefully increasing the salaries of grade 10, hopefully higher than inflation, automatically the salary of the member of staff will increase. Whereas in this case, each time you are changing salaries, you have to update each single member of staff. Okay. So you can see that very quickly, it can become very complicated. Just with uh, storing your staff members, ideally we would like a staff table, a branch table, and uh, a salary table. Okay. And we can imagine that that's very a small part from a database which would cover the activities of the company. Okay. So you will have system with tens and hundreds of tables. Could you guess how many tables there are in your blog? How many digits? Is it between 1 and 10? 10 and 100? More than 100? Yeah, so it's between 10 and 100. Okay. Even for a simple system like a blog, you have already more than 10 uh, tables. And during this week's activity, you are going to go through those tables. You will know exactly what is the number on your system. And you will know what different table, what each table does, what type of records and fields they have. Okay? So a, a professional system will have a very large number of tables. And all those tables have to communicate with each other using that primary key. So if your primary key is wrong, if it's not identifying um, an instance uniquely, anything you will get from your database will be rubbish. Okay. So you really need to focus when you are designing your database because otherwise it's just a useless system which will make you take wrong decisions. Okay, so here we have a, a small list of database management systems that you may have heard of, maybe some of them. So we have one which is called MySQL that a lot of people like because it's open source and quite powerful. So that's the one we will be having a look at uh, next week. There's another one, PostgreSQL. So already there is SQL, which is, seems to be an important word in the field of databases, which also open source, which is great, but generally it's a bit more powerful than MySQL. If you have Office, and most of you have, Office or have used Office, one of the packages you get is Microsoft Access. And that's a database system as well. It's a nice little system. It's not a professional system, but 
in order to organize your book or game collections, it's perfect. Okay. And then you have uh, other commercial systems. Maybe those words will uh, bring a, a bell. You have Oracle. You have SQL Server from Microsoft. You have DB2 from IBM. So you can see that Mi Microsoft has this SQL Server and this Microsoft Access. So there are two levels <coughs> of databases which are offered by Microsoft. And they all have very fancy logos. Okay, so just a little quiz. Some people will have no idea about it, and that's okay, you just guess. Some others will have heard about certain systems. So in your view, what is the most popular database management system? system which are the most popular currently. You know that the list is updated every year and there are changes but that has been quite stable. I mean you need to remember that these relational database management systems are dating from the 70s <coughs> and they are still the ones which are used the most. So it's maybe not a field which is moving very quickly. I mean they found a good system and are not evolving that much more. So if we look just at the last three years, Oracle has been number one, MySQL has been number two, <coughs> and Microsoft SQL Server number three. Okay. Then for the fourth place, we had this PostgreSQL. We said <coughs> it was kind of um, a super MySQL. But MySQL is making so much progress, getting so better all the time, that people see less and less interest in getting the super MySQL, because the MySQL is already quite super. Okay. Uh, so Postgre is going down a little bit. You have this uh, Mongo database, which is quite interesting, because it's, it's growing. Okay. It was six. Last year it was fifth. This year it's fourth. So then we have this uh, DB2 from IBM, it was five, three years ago, now it's six. We have Access, which is stable, and these other systems. So if we look at which models they are using, you can see that uh, seven out of the ten are, are using the relational, relational database uh, model. And which excludes the first three. Okay. So, suggest that learning about that model is a good idea. Yeah. Um, so, MongoDB, I mean, it's a system which has a very nice interface, and so it's maybe less professional than the others, but it's, it's going up. Okay. So, is it going to enter in the first three next year? Because it was six 
three years ago, fifth last year, fourth this year. Is it going to finish third this? Possibly not. Okay. Because now if we look at the, the market share somehow, we can see that databases is basically three systems. Okay. Two thirds of the market is Oracle, <coughs> MySQL, and uh, Microsoft SQL. Yeah. So even if uh, MongoDB is doing well, there's still a lot to in order to catch up and enter the in the in the top three. Okay. Um, also, something we we can notice is that the SQL suffix is quite popular. Okay. And I think that's maybe why you chose MySQL as number one and not Oracle, because if we look at the different flavors of MySQL, of SQL, you have MySQL, you have Microsoft SQL, you have PostgreSQL, uh, you have SQL Lite, okay? So all combined, you know, they, they are over 50% of the market, okay? So if you manage to speak SQL, in principle, <coughs> you will, should manage the different SQL dialects, okay? So, so the choice between which uh, uh, database system to, to study is really between some flavor of SQL and Oracle. Okay. Um, we will do MySQL, a bit of MySQL next week, and you will do a lot of MySQL at Kingston. And if you are really interested in databases, you will also do a bit of Oracle. Okay? Because if you are serious about databases, obviously you need to know some SQL flavor and Oracle. Uh, Oracle is much more complicated. And, uh, and also it's not free like MySQL. <laughs> so there's a lot of to say for MySQL. <laughs> um, so, but you need to be aware that Oracle is a very big player and big companies will be using Oracle. So, but again, you know, if you know SQL, switching to Oracle will not be such, you know, they are not dialects, but you can already understand quite a bit if you are familiar with one of the two. Okay, so we spoke, so you have all those nice systems, but obviously they rely on an appropriate database design. So we spoke about those tables, those uh, primary key which allow to do the, the connections. So usually when you want to design a database, you are looking at the system which has been in use so far, okay, because if you have a database, it means that you have been collecting data and you have maybe not been organizing them the right way or the best you could, but you have been collecting data for a reason. Okay? So go back to the current system and try to see what is important, what kind of, of data you, are, you have been collecting, what kind of fields you are collecting for those data what kind of data form. You have a customer, you give them a form to fill in. So that's very informative because if this form is important, they should be able to go on your database system and enter the same information on, uh, your, in your database system in order to enter the data. Um, and also, what kind of reports are you producing using those data? You have bills, you have tax revenue things, you have uh, orders, many things. All the things you had in your last system, you need to have them in your new system. Maybe you are going to add stuff because it was not possible to do it in the past, but now that, uh, but at least you need to reproduce everything that was there before, if, it's, if it was there for a good reason. So, but then 
you need to avoid repetitions. Okay? When you are, you have the feeling that you are always filling in the same form with the same information and there are just a couple of fields changing. Okay? This feeling of always the same form and stuff. You want to avoid that. And your customer will be very happy and very grateful if you don't have to fill in everything each time. Okay? You are very happy when you go on Amazon and you are order uh, some product that you don't have to enter your delivery address each time. Okay. So your, your system will allow to prevent that repetition, which obviously creates errors. As we, as we know, are we in Kingston, Surrey? Are we in Kingston, uh, Greater London? Or are we in Kingston upon Thames? All those are possible. And I'm sure that all of us are using different ways in order to describe in Kingston. And obviously you want to keep it as simple as possible because if you have a, a system with hundreds of tables, it's going to be very difficult to maintain. Okay? So maybe logically it makes some sense to have that many tables, but it needs to, pra to be practical. So keep your system simple if you can. Uh, obviously the primary keys are essential. And remember this uh, Geigo rule, any garbage going in means that you are going to get garbage out of your system. Okay. That's an essential rule of database uh, design. <coughs> so when you are allowing, uh, you are, when you are entering data, you need to define what are the fields which are a must. I mean, when we do things on the internet, there are those fields with this letter star, and if you don't provide information, you cannot go further in the system. So you need to be very clear what are optional fields and what are the ones which are absolutely required <coughs> when you are doing your design. Also, you want to make your data entry as foolproof as possible. Okay? So we have set, for example, using pull-down menus for the branches in our case. They have been defined. They are not moving, changing so often. So don't type the name of the branch. Just pick the value in a menu. Uh, when you are asking people for an email address, you are expecting some kind of format. Okay, you are expecting some arrow bars and you are expecting some dot coms UK or something at the end. So already you can do some checks that if the format of what is entered doesn't fit that, there is some kind of problem. Okay. So instead of recording garbage, you are able at the entry of the data saying no, that's not correct. Or if you are asking for a phone number, obviously you are expecting only digits. And depending on the country, you know how many digits you are expecting. So you are helping the user not to make mistake when entering the data. Uh, obviously, using a barcode scanners is one way of not, not making mistakes. You know, in the past, when uh, companies were advertising a website, they would give you the whole address of the website. And you would have to type everything, you would make some mistake in it, and eventually a, lot, a large number of people would not bother anymore going on that website because they didn't get it the first time. So now we get QR codes. You just take a picture with your mobile and you go to the website. No more errors in <coughs> trying to type in the address. Okay. So again, try to use technology as much as possible, you don't want errors in your data. Because error in your data means error in information, info, error in knowledge, error in decision. Okay. okay, so that was a, a brief introduction of databases. I don't want to say much more about it. You have the main concept. You are, you are going to get modules on that. So you will be go in depth. But now we have enough to start doing some practical work on databases. Okay. 
and we have enough for next week starting investigating uh, MySQL and using it. So activity 11, the first of the year. So you have created your blog. Most of you have created their blog. Some of you have not created your blog, so they will have to create a blog. Okay. And uh, as I said, when you created your blog, a large number of tables, first the da da database was created, and a large number of tables was created. So now it's your time to investigate those tables. How many of them? What kind of uh, name the tables have? What kind of fields? What is recorded? And maybe that's your opportunity to remove some embarrassing information that had been posted on your blog and you couldn't remove because the interface was either complicated or didn't allow you to do it. Now you can go in the core inside the machine and say, here is my table, here is the information. I remove that <laughs> or I update it, okay? Because very often you cannot update your, your posts. So maybe that's the, also an, an opportunity to change your post a little bit. Uh, you will get a, a little quiz. And then I want you to create a database from scratch. Okay. So if you have uh, bought a domain following the, the right instruction, they are, going, they are providing you with a, a system which allow you to create a database, okay? So it's not MySQL, it's none of these, it's some nice uh, interface. I want to create a new database, I want to create a table called that. Here are the fields in that table. What are the uh, type of each field? This field is for, it's a text, this one is some numbers and so on. And my primary key is going to be that field. So it's very simple, but I would like you to do it from, from scratch so you have uh, the ability to create it yourself without everything being created for you, without being aware of it. Uh, and obviously I would like you to create a database on any topic of interest, okay? Your CD collection, your favorite films, football teams, whatever. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and I will see you next week for the follow-up on uh, MySQL.